Hello, my friend. And welcome to my channel. For today's distance Reiki session, we're going to be focusing on self soothing. Self soothing. So, for this session, you can kind of pair the watching of this or the receiving of this session with our emotional regulation session. Those, these two themes are really linked. So. Let's go ahead and begin by doing a little bit of energetic clearing and I'll just start chatting to you a little bit about the kind of work that we're going to be doing here. I'm going to be using a selenite tower and we're going to start off by just kind of doing a little bit of Energetic plucking, 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 plucking. So as always, this kind of work is really beneficial as a complement to the other work that you're doing. And when we're talking about emotional regulation or self-soothing, just making sure that we are seeing a mental health care professional as we move through any of these things because the subject can really connect a lot with um, unhealthy self-soothing which can be, you know, addiction, um, perhaps even self-harm so we just want to be really mindful of that as we're doing this kind of spiritual work and making sure that we have a solid complementary um, practice and um, routine when it comes to our mental health. Doing a bit of clearing here and self-soothing. The way we can think about this is, you know, when we're watching a baby experiencing something that is stressful, whether that's a separation from a parent um, or whatever it might be, discomfort, emotional or physical discomfort, and then seeing that child suck their thumb or maybe like suck a blanket or seeing them touch their face or rock back and forth. These are forms of emotional regulation. These are forms of self-soothing. So we're sort of wired for this. It's our way of coping with emotions, sensations, feelings, physical or otherwise, that we might not know how to sit with, that we might not understand. So, my intention here is to recognize, or rather help you to recognize in whatever way, the difference between healthy self-soothing techniques and unhealthy self-soothing techniques. And I think these can be different based on your circumstance. These can be different based on what it is that you're moving through in that particular time. These can be different depending on who you are, on your personality, on your history. So this is a totally judgment-free zone, but this is really 
My intention here is to empower you to be more intentional about those techniques that you are employing to soothe yourself during times of stress or maybe even trauma. So, I have a sneaky suspicion that since you're here checking out the ASMR video, that you are at least in some way familiar with self-soothing, even if that doesn't necessarily mean that you would put the term to it or not. Um, I think ASMR is a really popular um, form of self-soothing, and I think, for the most part, an incredibly healthy one. I think ASMR is a beautiful way of kind of connecting, deciding to honor that part of yourself that needs a little bit of rest and relaxation and a little bit of soothing in whatever way and the fact that there's a person on the other end who has you in mind, you in their heart space and is dedicating time to trying to make you feel better in whatever way that might be that can kind of add to the experience of receiving that for me when I when I watch ASM I just drop my lighter when I watch ASMR that's the way that I feel so let's light our sage and do a bit of further clearing here it is a very cool day and so you might hear some wind, you might hear some rain, you might hear the heat. <laughs> Your girl is soothing herself by keeping the heat on during that session. <laughs> so thanks for that. <laughs> Your patience with that. So while I do this energetic clearing with the smoke, I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about different forms of self-soothing, kind of starting to break down and parse through healthy versus unhealthy self-soothing. And I want to encourage you through this to really take stock and be honest with yourself about what you're moving through a really healthy device and mechanism tool for this is to really start to recognize bring your attention to the times where you are starting to self-soothe perhaps in unhealthy ways Usually the unhealthy ways are when it's unintentional. You are unintentionally doing something, not bringing your full agency to it. When it's out of alignment with your higher self, these are the moments that we can start to recognize that that might be tipping into the category of unhealthy self-soothing. So... For example, a healthy form of self-soothing would be to take a warm bath when you're feeling a little bit stressed. A healthy form of self-soothing could be um, punching a punching bag when you're feeling angry or irascible. So, an unhealthy form of self soothing when you're feeling stressed would be turning to um, an addictive substance, it could be turning to. Um, 
pornography or objectification. It could be and then on the other side of the spectrum in terms of regulating anger or irritability an unhealthy version of that would be self-harm that's why I really wanted to make sure that we had space here for um, seeking a resource in every one of my videos in the description box I leave a link to LifeNet which is like a hotline um, you can also look up hotlines and sometimes even warm lines in your local area um, warm lines are basically for m you know mental health issues or any kind of issues that you might be struggling with that aren't necessarily in crisis mode but that you are just struggling with and need a little bit of help from my understanding um, when I was um, volunteering with this awesome group of women that I actually just left um, they, one of them worked for the warm line in our area and that's really powerful work so if you're looking for help as well that you need to just talk to somebody that can be really helpful but I do leave a, a, a hotline in the description box of every video but that can be another aspect of healthy self-soothing is talking to somebody talking to somebody about your feelings talking to somebody about what you're moving through whether it's like in the comments section of a YouTube video and you have somebody saying oh my gosh I just experienced that same thing we've all been there sending you love which you all are so good at doing for one another and especially since I am not able to, you know, respond to all of you, even though I read what all of you are saying, I'm not able to always respond to all of you. It's so beautiful that you help me in those areas when there is someone who might be struggling that I am not able to respond to and that you're able to catch because, yeah, that's just been something recently I realized. You're... I'll, I'll be able to get to it much, much later than you are, which is just so awesome that you're so supportive and lovely with each other. So if it's a comment section of a YouTube video, if it's a warm line or a hot line, if it's calling a friend or a family member, you can also write down these emotions, you know, even just keep a little tracker on your phone or in a little journal by your bedside table that just can tell you where you can kind of express yourself and you can write these things down kind of purge some of these things from your the mental plane get them out there now self-soothing can just be very complicated I'm going to spray it to your right your left above your head kind of like your feet because, and it is all about your intention, and it is all about what's going on for you. Because self-soothing that's unhealthy for one person could be healthy self-soothing for another. Perhaps you are someone who struggles with disordered eating. Then the, your f version of unhealthy self-soothing might be you know, you know, going into the kitchen late at night or something like that. Whereas someone who does not have an eating disorder might turn to comfort food or maybe like a cup of tea and a biscuit or something like that for, for healthy self-soothing. So it really depends, it really depends on you, what you're moving through, your history, your experience, so really honor that. There's an end without any judgment, no judgment allowed. Because this really is you protecting yourself, which is so powerful. 
just recognizing that there's a different way down your feet. Oops, sorry. Now, if you are having issues with an addiction, then above your head. Look up uh, different um, chapters of organizations like Alcoholics Anonymous, Overeaters Anonymous, uh, Narcotics Anonymous, uh, SSA for Sex Addiction, Sexaholics Anonymous, I think it is. Well, you know, really try your best to engage with a group because that can be really helpful. Brene Brown talks about how shame um, can't exist if it's shared. So that can be a really helpful thing is just to talk to other people who are experiencing the same thing that you are. Free of judgment. Just like here. Free of judgment. Free of judgment. We all have different ways of coping. Even someone who looks like they have everything together. And if someone who looks so healthy on the outside, you know, even they have different ways of coping. Maybe they're um, a workaholic. You know, maybe they are really, they are, remove themselves from the present moment by being addicted to work. And if that's one of you, again, no judgment. It's just, these are just ways that we cope. And so... It's just important if we recognize it to start to bring intentionality to these aspects so that we can live more in alignment. It's hard. It's simple in a lot of ways. These concepts aren't very complicated, but it's very, it's very challenging to do, to put into practice. So... One one aspect that we have to really look at when we're talking about self-soothing is what is the emotion that you are finding intolerable in this moment? What's that emotion? I have my little ashtray right underneath you. What is the emotion that you're finding intolerable? And it could be, very often is, that we are not in touch with the emotion. That we feel it in our, our body, our system, our behavioral system kicks in and goes, Oh, that's that thing I don't want to feel. And then we go straight to the self soothing So it's very hard to slip the intentionality aspect in there. And this is where we want to start to mind the gap. And if we're able to broaden the gap between the recognition and the action. A consistent meditation practice, even if it's just a minute a day. That's what you can do, a minute a day. But a consistent meditation practice. I would suggest at least five minutes a day if you can if you can handle it and if you're really struggling with self soothing unhealthy self soothing five minutes a day of meditation mindfulness meditation and it can be really powerful I think journaling particularly when we're triggered can be And there might be a lot of you who are like, yeah, I got this. And there might be some of you who are like, I've never even thought about self-soothing or emotional regulation or any of that kind of stuff. So we're all coming at this from different perspectives and different levels of our healing journey. And where you are right now is exactly
exactly where you're supposed to be. You're not supposed to be anywhere else in this journey. And hopefully you feel that you found this session for a reason. I feel that you have. And that I can empower you in some way to take this into your own hands, start to really invite agency into these actions, into these behavioral patterns. I don't mean to imply that it's easy, it's incredibly difficult. Trust me, I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's incredibly difficult. As someone who has been through it, I know how difficult it is, but I also know that you can do it. I also know that you are able to do this. There's an aspect of your self-soothing that you are not comfortable with. It will usually start, that aligned self will usually start to speak to you through your intuition, through your emotions and start to say, I feel worse after this. I feel empty after this. I feel more disconnected after engaging in this unhealthy, self-soothing behavior, whatever it might be. Just recognizing that that's, that's like, I believe your wiser self just trying to communicate to you in whatever way it knows how through your emotions. It's a great guide. To say, hey, there's a better way. <laughs> because numbing ourselves from experiencing these emotions might, might, might work to prevent you from experiencing that intolerable emotion that you might be feeling. It might work. I hazard a guess it's not sustainable and it won't work forever, but it might. But I do know that while it numbs that emotion that you find intolerable, all of the other emotions that you want more of in your life, very often the thing that you're trying to find through engaging in this unhealthy self-soothing behavior the thing that you're desperately seeking that you're trying to bring more of whether that's joy happiness connection it's going to really numb that as well that's the only flaw in the system is that not only when we when we self-soothe in unhealthy ways, we can't cherry pick what gets numbed, what we disassociate from. We will inevitably disassociate from our ability to really connect to others. We will inevitably disassociate from these higher vibrational energies like joy. Love, connection, compassion, but regardless of where you are in this journey, you are worthy of love and belonging just as you are, you are worthy of love, you are so worthy of love, no prerequisites required. Prerequisite. Prerequisite. Prerequisites required. <laughs> and as a kid, I had a hard time seeing my O's and my F's. So I had sort of a very interesting lisp like this. I talked like this. My O's and my S's. Okay. I'm going to 
draw the sacred Reiki symbols about a foot away from your heart center. Just take this time to really sink into whatever is supporting you beneath you. Whether that's a chair, couch, maybe the floor, maybe you're sitting and relying on the floor, your bed, a desk, whatever you're sitting at, wherever you're sitting, or lying down, whatever is beneath you, holding you up. A few of you have said that you take me on walks and you listen. So if that's the case, the earth beneath your feet supporting you as you take each step. The earth is supporting you. Whatever is beneath you is supporting you. My energy is supporting you. You choosing to take this time for yourself, that's in support of you. So take some time here if you even want to place your hands lovingly on your heart center. This is the cedarwood incense. It's so nice. Okay. Perhaps you are in a triggered state right now and that's what has caused you to turn on YouTube and find um, some ASMR content. So if that's the case, I hope that this can provide you with the kind of healthy self-soothing that you're searching for. In addition to the energetic healing that I like to engage with here with you, I also think it's really important for me to offer you nurturing energy and loving energy. And I've shared this here before, but I, I love this idea of spreading seeds of compassion and hopefully some of you are able to pick those up, perceive them, you know, maybe plant them, sow them, nurture them, so that we can kind of send this ripple effect. Move through now with a few stones. I placed um, tissue paper down on my little table with my stones underneath them. So it would be a nice sound. Hopefully that's nice. But I wanted you to know that that's what that sound is. So first I'm going to move through with this rhodonite. Rhodonite. And I'm going to move through with this carnelian. Rhodonite is a great stone for compassion, acceptance, forgiveness. Grey stone for balancing in the heart space. And carnelian is a very nurturing stone. It's a stone of artists, of creatives. I love using it for a nurturing energy as well. Right on that sacral for this creativity, for connecting with Mother Earth energy. We're going to move these through your energy body.
in real time if you're here because you're feeling triggered by something in your life, by an emotion, by anything that you're you're recognizing that you're turning to a self daily really start to connect with if you're open to it if you're open to it what it is that you find intolerable what emotion are you trying to escape from sometimes you know there's something that feels so overwhelming and like I said, we're all different for some people coping with an overwhelming emotion. If that's overwhelming stress or overwhelming anxiety, we might feel like we need to uh, lie down, take a bath, um, drink a cup of tea, use a stress ball, squeezing a stress ball, listening to some music. And for others of us, when we feel overwhelmed in whatever way, we might need to kind of extract that energy. And so things like going for a run, um, we gave the example of a punching bag, but anything that feels more like we have to kind of exercise <laughs> that emotion. And I meant exorcise, you know, um, through exercise. <laughs> anyway, um, really getting rid of that emotion that we have to kind of like fling it out. And for some of us, we really just kind of want to like cocoon ourselves and comfort in these times wrapping ourselves up so here I want to provide you with more of that kind of nurturing energy that is more comforting from the perspective of support care compassion healing all of that but there's also equally as comforting for others is this more active more, um, other word is escaping me but when we're really trying to cast that energy outwards so just getting in touch with where we fall maybe there's some middle place on that spectrum where we fall Maybe we fall in different areas depending on the circumstance, very likely. Perhaps we, um, it really depends on what mood we're in, what's going on with our hormones. It could depend on so many different things, what we need. And it's okay if those things change, but we really want to start employing healthy ways of coping. It can be really empowering. So just starting to say, what am I looking for when I'm engaging in those unhealthy self-soothing practices? <laughs> what am I looking for? What am I actually trying to find? Chances are there's a much better way of getting there, of finding that. If you maybe um, turn to alcohol, turn to substance because you're longing for a connection then you know really maybe try reaching out for um uh, to a friend maybe just opening up and being vulnerable with someone that you trust and that you care about just saying you know I'm really struggling right now or whatever it might be but reaching out and connecting with someone can be really and that's a form of healthy self-soothing that we can engage in. And you might engage in some healthy self-soothing and then some unhealthy self-soothing. And again, no matter where you are in the process, the only thing that you're not allowed to do is be judgmental of yourself, judgmental of others, or shame yourself. You know, we don't want to invite shame here. 
At least those are my rules for you. You can do whatever you want, obviously. Free will is a beautiful thing. But that's my recommendation. No shame. No shame. Wherever you are, no shame. We just want to find healthy ways of soothing. Healthy ways of soothing. Because whatever it is that made you turn to that in the first place, it's a place of pain. It's a place of longing. It's a place of suffering on some level. And so just know that you are worthy to take care of yourself. You're worthy to engage in healthier forms of emotional regulation. Mm -hmm. I'm place this carnelian on your sacral and then I'm gonna place this rhodonite right on your heart space there so we're sending this lovely energy into the heart space and under the sacral filling you up with love mm, with emotional balance Gorgeous. So we're doing things a little bit differently today, but I'm going to light a candle now. I'd like for you to set an intention for yourself. I'm going to hold space for it, but I'd like for you to set your own intention for this one. Setting your intention for the rest of your day. Setting your intention for your behavior, for what you'd like to call more of. Perhaps what you'd even like to release. Can you see? Yeah. All right, my friend. On behalf of your highest, wisest, most empowered and aligned self, in loving comfort and perfect balance, I wish to leave this flame open for you to set your own intention as you move through the rest of your day or night. May it set an intention for the rest of your day, for the rest of your week, for this month, for this year, or maybe even for the rest of your life. But whatever it is, I would like to leave this flame open for you to set that intention now. As long as it's in service of your and everyone else's highest, wisest selves, I will honor that intention and see it through time and space to where and whenever you're receiving this and onward. You are divine, you are connected, you are expressive, you are loved, you are strong, you are creative, and you are emotionally balanced, you are safe, you are safe. If you would be open to it love it if you would share in the comments any of your healthy self-soothing techniques, anything that you practice on a regular basis. I think that can be a really helpful way of sharing, maybe even with me. I'd love to read and see what kind of stuff you engage with. Just, you know, add to um, my portfolio of things that I like to kind of turn to. 
but to share with each other, to really help to empower each other, to maybe make a more aligned and intentional choices about our actions. So that would be really helpful. I would love it if, if you could do that. Um, also, we'll be uh, talking about better help in just a moment. You know, give them a try if you've been looking for a therapist and haven't been able to find one. I highly recommend it and yeah. Okay. I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day or night. And until we meet again, be so well. Just wanted to.